Hey everyone, welcome into episode 14 of Tivoli Zoo, and uh, episode 14 is going to be similar to 13 in that we have another guest builder today. Uh, his name is Wyatt. Uh, Wyatt, say hello. Hey guys. Uh, where uh, where can people check you out? I, you know, I know you have a YouTube channel. Um, I think you're on Twitter as well. Yeah, so I got my YouTube channel, Wyatt Andrews Workshop, and then I got Twitter, Instagram, and I'm also a frequent member on the Bro Nation Discord. Sweet, awesome. Um, well, I'll uh, I'll be sure to link to your YouTube in the comments, uh, or not in the comments, in the uh, description of the video, so people can uh, go over and check out your work. Um, so I think initially we started talking when Carlos was working in the zoo. You had offered to. Uh, to do some work and i know you had done some things for beyond drew um is there any other projects that you've worked on so um yeah i had just watched the episode of tivoli with you and carlos and you had asked for a guest builder and um i sort of threw my hat in the ring not really knowing if you were even going to respond but you did which was super exciting and yeah i brought up to you that i'd worked with drew i'd worked with lion i also right. worked on I were, yeah, I worked on um, Drew's Zooten Tower, which is like his big collab on his Discord. So yeah, I kind of find myself working best um, with someone or just collaborating in general. Yeah, I mean, I like I told you, um, I've sort of peeked around, um, so I haven't I haven't seen everything in detail, but um, what I've seen so far, I'm really excited for everyone to see. And uh, one of the reasons that I, uh, you know, I wanted to have you in the zoo is I felt like a lot of my habitats were lacking realism. Um, you know, I, th I think my infrastructure is good. I think my architecture is good. Um, but just the, totally. you know, the, the interior of the habitats, making them feel like they do in a zoo. Um, I think, frankly, honestly, when I would get to some, some of the stages, like even the African Savannah is a perfect example. After I finished everything on the outside, I just kind of didn't have it in me to do the inside. And it just, yeah. you know, placing plants and stuff and all that is uh, really tedious for me. So, you know, people like you who are good at that and don't <laughs> seem to mind doing it. Um, I was more than happy to have you uh, on the episode here. So um, anyway, we'll, we're starting here at the front. You took some time and sort of revamped this area here, uh, which I love the way it turned out. Um, I think it's built upon what was kind of already there and it's close enough to what is already in the Denver Zoo that um, it just fits in really nicely. Um. I just kind of wanted to fill it out more. There's like a little um, sort of gravel riverbed and the sort of group style planting you see in a lot of desert gardens like this. Yeah, that gravel path is a nice touch. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, this is something that, you know, you and I talked quite a bit as you were working and I, know I mentioned it to you, but this this project is unique from the standpoint that, you know, we're doing some stuff that exists in real life and I want to try to balance being realistic to what's already there and then also um, looking at the master plan and trying to be as realistic as possible there which sometimes means not necessarily doing it exactly like it is in the master plan and then then you couple all of that with the trade-offs of having to kind of fight the way the game works and yeah. obviously the game won't allow you to do everything you would really want mm. Absolutely. And for like the exhibits themselves, I um, looked at the master plan and your videos pretty extensively just so like none of that vision was muddled. Yeah, no, I think from the little bit that I checked it out, I think you did. Um, you did a great job. I'm really excited for people to check it out. So um, one thing that uh, just to stop here real quick um, in the next episode, I'm actually going to have another uh, guest builder on Ricey, um, who is another mm -hmm. member of the Bro Nation Discord, and she has her own YouTube channel. A lot of you probably know her from um, the Pelosa uh, project, which I don't think they've had an, a recent episode out anytime soon. Um, but uh, yeah, she's just really, really, really good. And she's tackling the uh, interior of the gift shop and doing a fair amount of sign work for me. So um, that will be uh, a, a nice addition here. So yeah, as we get in here, the first thing people are going to notice is a major change uh, to the Warthog exhibit, which... Uh, right off the bat, this tree here, um, I love. It needed something in this area. It just felt kind of barren as you come in into the zoo here. Um, and then uh, the first of a few custom signs. Yeah, so um, 
what I like doing with my zoo entrances a lot is like having the entrance itself, but then having like a pretty thick grove of trees behind it, just 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 to kind of obscure what's behind it and to sort of add an element of sort of surprise yeah. as you come in. Yeah, definitely. And then, yeah, I did add that little sign about the copy, which copies are like little ecosystems in the African savanna that are just like big rock formations, and that's kind of about all the different animals that inhabit those. And then I used the um, sort of African painted signs that Just Goron made. I thought they fit in pretty well. Yeah, yeah no, those, those look great. Um, I love these little implied signs. I think, uh, you know, now we're going to have billboards in the game, but I still will honestly, most of the time, prefer stuff like this. Um, it, oh, yeah. It just same. looks better, I think. Um, mm. You know, and I think if I'm sure the billboards are going to be very similar to the ones that we had in Planet Coaster, which a lot of people are going to see once you start using those. They, um, You do lose a fair amount of fidelity from the source image and then what it actually looks like in the game so you know what they're great what they're great for is like fake menus for quick service you know food food shops and things like that um but there's just no substitute for stuff like that yeah there's like a kind of tactile organic quality quality to all the signs that everyone's been making yep i agree um yeah, so I I love what you did here. Um, it's again, you you kept it very true to what's already there in the Denver Zoo, um, but it even improved upon what I had done and made it more like the Denver Zoo. Like especially these little uh, this little window here, I love into their little den. Um, mm. That's a huge upgrade over what I had there before. <laughs> um. And yeah, I um, redid the rock color just because, A, I think that was more accurate to the zoo, and I just think the yellow in the original was a little overwhelming. Yeah, yeah, you know, early on in the game, I was trying to match the rocks as closely as I could to what was there, and mm -hmm. now that we have these faux rocks, it gives you so much more versatility, and yeah, I agree, yeah. I think it, um, it melds in much better. Uh, it doesn't look so, especially with the, the entrance building behind there, it doesn't look so oh, yeah. uh, striking. But one of the yeah. things that and why I wanted you to come into the zoo and work on this is just immediately, if you're not looking at specific details in this habitat here, like if you're just sort of looking at the whole of it, it just feels accurate and realistic. And then you start to look at the little details like this log here, and you can see like, this is not an in-game log. Like you built this log out of multiple scenery pieces. And this uh, pool here being fully surrounded by concrete. I mean, those are the things that um, really transport you from sort of like a nature preserve type of pen to something that actually exists in the zoo. Exactly. I'm. I in everything I do. I really try to kind of resist. I don't. I don't like no flack on the game itself, but I really kind of try to break away from what Planet Zoo wants me to do. Mm -hmm. Like stuff like the foliage requirements and the terrain requirements are like, I guess, a thing. But like when you're trying to do realistic stuff, it really gets in the way, in yeah. my opinion. Yeah, I think so too. And it's that's one of the challenges of the game when you're, especially when you're doing a recreation or or using source imagery and stuff is. You know, the game, like you said, the game wants you to play the game a certain way. And it's the same yeah. thing that happened in Planet Coaster. You know, they want you to build the big boxes that are four meter, you know, with four meter walls. And that's yeah. that's a story and all that. Um, and so the more you can get outside of like using the grid and using just the standard scenery pieces um, and finding creative ways to use pieces like this, um, the better off you're going to be in the long run. And it really shows in this first exhibit here. Um, so where should I go next? Should I go to the coastal exhibit or to Predator Ridge and the Savannah? We could turn around and go with Predator Ridge okay. and then we'll head to the coast. Okay, we'll go over here. Um, so one of the things that I love that you were able to do is, and I'll, I'll get out of the peep view in a second here, but these little sort of um, carve-outs here that kind of protrude into the exhibit were something that yeah. exists in real life. I mean, you, I'm, I'm sure you looked at the Google Street View. Yeah, I just looked back and forth while I was building. Yeah, so I mean, this is something that I struggled to do along with the path system and the fact that now this exists and it works and you kind of get put more into the habitat is just incredible. Yeah, um, one thing a note I kind of had when you kind of showed me around was that like a lot of the exhibits kind of relied a little too heavily on the in-game fences. Uh-huh, yep. 
like in, instead of instead of like this custom glass railing I made, it was like the mesh fence and the concrete glass yeah. fence and the glass kind of it was just a little repetitive. So I kind of wanted to break that up. Yeah, I think that looks good. Um, I noticed that on the Savannah uh, exhibit too. That'll be another area to point that out. And like even these little rope. Uh, fences here I yeah. think are a great touch and this backdrop of wooden planks um, again pointing to the point you made about the more you can get outside of what the game wants you to do the better exactly. um, so yeah I love I love how this looks I mean it, when again I'll pop out at, out to the uh, aerial view when we're kind of done and specifically over this area it almost looks like a carbon copy of the google, the google earth view it is insane how accurate you got this yeah again i wanted to like um get as close as possible in terms of the vibe so i just had my laptop out while i was building on my pc and i had google google earth open and i was just looking back and forth yeah, I mean, it's when I first saw this, I was literally speechless. <laughs> I mean, and <laughs> did you. you? I'm sure you had to do um, one thing. I know for a fact that I was, I just didn't have it in me to go back and change. Was that the the space that I used to have between the sort of terrain here and the wall was definitely not enough. Like, there's a good chance a lion could jump that. Um, so, did you do a fair amount of terrain work in here in addition to the, all the foliage? So before I did any of that, I measured it and it was good. It was like 26, 27 oh, okay. feet. So, okay. But um, any like terrain changes I made were probably just for the sake of design. Gotcha. Okay. Nice. Well, it looks so good. Um, and then you, people probably saw just there, you made a, an animal change, which uh, I was planning on doing. And early, early on when I made these two exhibits, I got tons of comments about how the cheetahs can't be close to the lions because they get super stressed out. And so yeah. um, we'll go over here now, and it's now the African wild dogs, I believe, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, hold on, especially for up. this. All right. So, especially for this area, I think this might have been my favorite to do, just because predator exhibits in general incorporate so much like fun rock work and logs and stuff like, like that, and I, those are definitely like hallmarks of my building style. So that was all really fun to incorporate. Yeah, like this whole area in here looks so good. Um, yeah. Do so as we're kind of looking at all of this. Like, what's your what's your background with zoos? I mean, are you you know do you have a lot of animal knowledge? I mean, it seems like on Bro Nation you get sort of a mix of people who are theme park enthusiasts and have kind of transitioned into zoos but don't really know much about zoos, and then you have like you know people who really love zoos and know some about animals and then people who love zoos and know a ton about animals so where do you kind of fall in those categories so i started out being a huge animal nerd i had um a ton of different phases when i was little like kind of fixating on different groups of animals um and then that obviously extended to enjoying going to the zoo but i didn't really get into the sort of zoo design process until this game came out and i hopped on bro nation and i learned so much from people like you and mike and eben and um all everything i do is very much a sort of product of what i've learned on here but um i do have like a lot of base animal knowledge that nice. i've accum accumulated since i was a little kid nice that's awesome um yeah, so one thing I immediately noticed here, too, is did you you raise this terrain up a fair amount over here, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. it looks... Whoa. <laughs> it looks so good. <laughs> the jumping good. is always yeah. so thank you. Um, it looks so good now. I love how, like, you get a little bit of, like, immersion break you, like you do with zoos where you see this yeah. concrete here, which I, I love. Like, I think that kind of thing is something that zoos can never fully hide. Um, but I do love how it almost, I think even from back here, it looks like, you know, they're almost on the same savanna. Yeah, especially you get back up into there. And that's so cool. Yeah. Um, something I really try to hammer in is just, I want it to look man-made. Because if it looks too like, um, like, a, like a carbon copy of the animal's habitat, like, that are I think that arguably breaks the immersion even more because like now you're at like now you're at like Animal Kingdom and right. you want to be at a normal budget zoo. Yep. Yeah, I I think so too. And that that I think is an area where uh, they've probably struggled in developing the game. Is they made a zoo game, but a lot of what is done, you can tell they almost wanted to make a conservation game. Um, yeah. And uh, and I think you could have. You could have maybe struck more of a, a weight towards the the zoo 
um, mm-hmm. area. But either way, I mean, the, the fun thing for people like us is it creates a challenge. Uh, again, yeah. not using the game it was inten- the way it was intended to be used. Mm-hmm. So it's then like all the more impressive when people do manage to make something that yep. looks realistic. Yeah, God, man, this all of this rock work and foliage is so good. Thank you. Yeah, so now we're on the um, painted dog side. Yeah, it looks fantastic. So I think they have, they like rotate it. So there's like either painted dogs or hyenas on this side at any given time. But yeah, I've seen the they're... I've seen the painted dogs in the main pen too, um, and, oh, and the okay. hyenas actually. So they the way that the Predator Ridge is built is they can rotate all three of them between the. So there's that other random pen over here that I have to finish oh. and kind of flush out. So okay. like when last summer I went and they had two new lion cubs and they had the whole pride of lions in that smaller pen over there when the cubs, oh. the cubs were little. Um, yeah. And uh, and so, yeah, they they can rotate the animals and the way that their shoot system works on the inside. And then technically there's like even a pass through here in the real zoo where they can rotate the animals, you know, between all three exhibits. So it's really a, yeah. an ingenious design the way that they built it. It's really neat. And I think the one of the benefits they said from I watched a video on it from the uh, like a welfare standpoint is that it's, um, you know, it gives the animals like different smells because they go in and smell the animals that were there. And it just yeah. makes it feel like they're moving, you know, they're kind of moving and uh, being more nomadic like they would in the wild. Mm-hmm. That'd be kind of a fun like um, mechanic to incorporate in Planet Zoo, though. It seems a little difficult. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, to be able to use like multiple habitats like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess you could just move them, but like, where's the fun in that? Yeah. Yeah. So now, uh, now that you've done this, like, it gives me. So I was just kind of, kind of use this as a almost a, a backstage over here, but now I think mm-hmm. I'm gonna use this other side of this land bridge as additional savanna as well, considering how uh, how much the dogs really come onto this side over here and you get a great perspective yeah. of them so um this really helped to give me inspiration to try to tackle and f- finish that area there um so okay that now be, go ahead that would be amazing to see like a lot like the triple view, layer view oh, of like yeah. and, and dogs and just a giraffe yep. in the background yeah I think that would really yeah for sure um Awesome. Well, those I couldn't I couldn't be happier with how this these two exhibits turned turned out. I mean, it looks almost like carbon copy of what's there in real life. It's crazy how how well you nailed this. Thank you, dude. Yeah. So I guess it's less convenient, but I really want to save the savanna for last. Okay. So I think we'll go we'll go around to the coast. Okay. Sounds good. So getting closer to the coastal exhibit here, and um, before we look at all, everything you've done, I've started to do a sea eagle exhibit. Um, this is basically the same thing that they have in the Louisville Zoo. Um, I think there it's like called Glacier Run or something like that. You probably are familiar with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so um, these little sea eagles were made by Drek, and he made he's the same person that made these custom signs um that we Ooh. added yeah so there uh, drac also made the uh, totem poles that are in the exhibit and so i really wanted some signs that kind of went along with the totem poles and the overall theme um so yeah we've got uh this again needs to be fully fleshed out but you've got your sea eagles up there and i i couldn't find a ton of great videos about the louisville zoo and this this habitat in particular but i think from multiple pictures and videos i've watched i think you can actually like go into the the enclosure is that something that zoos do with these kind of uh raptors so for birds of prey when they're doing hands-on interaction it's almost always like a show display i've never heard of like a walk through aviary gotcha okay so they might you might be able to like go in for a show but you're not gonna just like waltz in there while the birds are just free like this yeah, that gotcha. sounds a little dangerous. Yeah, I assume so, but it was like the way it's built. So the way, yeah. that the, it, the way that the habitat is built in the Louisville Zoo is it's got these doors here. And then like the videos I've seen, there's clearly like a path in here and then a railing looking up at the birds. So it, be, it must yeah. be I for some be show. It would, it would have to be if that's the case. Because um, I've seen um, walk through aviaries with like vultures and stuff, but I don't really know how aggressive these guys are. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it seems it seemed weird to me i was like that exactly what you said it seems a little dangerous so 
Um, <laughs> but yeah, maybe if anyone knows, if anyone is uh, from Louisville or has been there and has seen the exhibit, please leave a comment below on how that works because I would love to uh, make that as accurate as possible. And uh, again, thank you to Drac for um, making the signs and these eagles. He's got a ton of these types of things on his workshop. I would encourage people to go check out. It's just mostly like the new letters are used to use for the uh, talons. And then um, most of this stuff up here is like, again, those font shapes and pieces and then uh, gutters. So it's crazy. Super creative. Okay, so immediately uh, you can tell that the landscaping is a million times better. <laughs> That's another thing that I totally phoned in once I finished. I fought with the water in this habitat and the land in this oh. habitat for so long. I just did not have it in me to uh, to tackle or like really give the interiors and the landscaping justice that it deserves. Um, and you have done it, though. It looks incredible even right off the bat here like if people remember this was just like an in-game fence like you said um and there was no rock work really and it was just you could look right into the the polar bear uh habitat here but this is again it feels so much more like how a zoo would actually look and i love so yeah, the rock work of, yeah yeah so i didn't do a whole lot to like these like little viewing areas but um I thought I thought they were simple enough that it um, worked just fine, but um, yeah, the rock work on this was um, not really a challenge, but it was definitely a different approach. Just because in the master plan, it's kind of a sort of squarish, yeah. um, kind of jagged, angular. Angular is definitely the right word for this. The rock work, mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to replicate that, but most of the um, rocks we have aren't really that shape, so right. I used. I blended them in with the temple pieces, and I think it actually. Oh, came out that's really, really, really smart. Nice. That's really smart. Um, yeah. I would not have known that. I honestly just thought it was all the faux, faux rock pieces. Mm. That's really cool. Um, so yeah, I mean, just stuff like this is looks. It looks right out of the the master plan images, and I'll toss a couple of those up here so people um, can kind of see and compare what you've done to what was there and just how well you were able to capture that inspiration in in the game i mean uh like this uh, that's just so freaking good that looks like it's out of the concept art <laughs> yeah i was gonna say right as we came up to the spot i like um this is like directly ripped from that one concept drawing in yep. the master plan. yeah it, like the log over the glass and the rock work and the totem pole Yep, it looks fantastic. I mean, and again, this is something you would not be able to accomplish if you just use the in-game pieces. I mean, you've got, yeah. this is all fully custom. Mm -hmm. And the fences I love, even that little detail. Um, so one thing that I did not know that you educated me on is that these guys in temperate climates have to be indoors. Yeah, so king penguins and I think other Antarctic penguins um, are extremely susceptible to airborne bacteria in temperate climates, so they need to be kept indoors. Gotcha. But um, I asked if you wanted me to do anything about it, and um, I'll, we'll just leave it for now. Yeah, I'm, this, I'm this, hopeful. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm really hopeful that we'll get sea lions um, at some point, and if we don't, then I'm sure someone will mod one at some point. And yeah. what I think I'll do at that point, and I'll probably have you back on to get um, your expertise on this one, because I honestly I just ripped off some of this rock work from their blueprints <laughs> when I was trying to make the last episode. I was just trying to work as fast as I could, um, and so these guys were just a placeholder to try to get them into the episode. Um, but what I think I'll do is if we get sea lions or get a mod or something like that we'll put sea lions in this bigger pool and then we'll move the seals over here um i love the shape of this pool i don't want to change anything about that but um yeah. it's good to know that those guys have to go um so yeah sorry king penguins <laughs> yeah i think i don't really think you have to change much you might not even <laughs> you might not even need, need me to come on but um i feel like sea um it's not really a big adjustment if you want to put sea lions in there yeah think i mean i'm assuming it's it'll be pretty similar to what's on the the other side already exactly um so one thing that i uh that you had here these, these were up taller with a thing across and mm -hmm. um i wanted to figure i wanted to ask you so i dropped them down here is there any way that 
you could make this safe so that the polar bears can't come up close. I mean, like before I had just sort of a metal like railing here, which which yeah. worked for the game, you know, like it prevented them from being able to access this in the game. Um, but mm. I don't know if that's something that would function in real life because I, I really want to try to avoid like the glass glare here if possible. Yeah. Um. So I feel like even with the railing, these guys weigh like almost a ton and they would destroy anything that is like shorter than them so that's why i raised up that's why that's why i raised up the glass because these guys are just monsters and you can't really you can't always trust like what the game says is or isn't reversible. right yeah um what if so, what if i took some of your rock work and like built up the rock work to like this height i mean they wouldn't be able to climb out of the water up that would they in real life oh yeah probably not okay all right. Well, I'm gonna I'll I'll do some messing around with that, and I'll send you some pictures to get your opinion. But um, yeah, again, just the the details here of like these little rocks and boulders and stuff. Like that's one thing I'd really noticed about the uh, is it I think it's the Detroit zoos. They have a really cool like Arctic circle yeah. habitat. Yeah. So I remember in the episode with this exhibit, you mentioned that you referenced that with like all the different kind of like habitats that polar bears are in or the different seasons. And um, when I heard you mention that, that was like my primary reference for this area. Oh, okay, nice. Yeah, it looks fantastic. I mean, these are they, this is just the faux rock pieces, right? Um, those are like the little temple. Oh, like, okay. Gosh, man, yeah. that is so crazy. Looks so good. I love how how elevated they are now too, and they just have these little. Again, I think this is a lot closer to the concept art, where it's like you can tell in the concept art that these are really carved out, and then they have these yeah. sort of platforms up there. A kind of like um, formation feature. Um, I ripped right from the like overlook of the area for this master plan. And the nice thing too is, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think polar bears do need a certain level of privacy. Um, are they, they are, are they sensitive they are, to that? They are like extremely shy, but I guess it is nice to get out of the way for like any animal. Yeah. So. Nice. And then this too is so much better than what was there before. <laughs> it looks so good. And did you do anything to this area down here? Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, the ceiling it looks totally different. Oh cool, and you use the faux. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That's such a nice touch. Was, yeah, I figured it was looking a little barren in here, and um, I just wanted to just kind of add some like little um, decor interior decorating. Yeah, this looks great. And almost the what piece is this on the ceiling? Um, that's the banner. Um, I think it has like leopard or zebra print. Oh, but you can color, okay. You can color it so, and it has like a really nice shiny. Yeah, texture, I didn't so. realize they were that shiny. Um, it almost yeah. gives like. It almost gives like a Northern Lights vibe, kind of. That's yeah. really, that's really cool. You could like um, shine some lights on that. Yeah, like do some green lights, some yeah. aqua lights on that. Like give a cool effect. That guy's got to find the bathroom. <laughs> um, yeah, that looks so good. Oh, and then I see too, you added some signage here for the yeah. seals. I didn't do a whole nice. lot with this one just because it was like a little less um, secluded, but I did throw in a cute little seal. Nice. That looks awesome. Yeah, you can already see the improvement in the rock work here. Um, so we'll go back up and take a look at that. Again, another sign from Drac. I might change the placement there. I was just trying to find different experiment, different things that I thought looked good. So, um, so what you want to do for signs, signage generally is put them in a spot where people aren't like walking. Yeah, so this main like thoroughfare nice wouldn't be good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, so this is also right out of the concept art. These little lanterns, they look really cool. Yeah. Those um, India lights are super versatile. Yeah, they, they uh, I think I put them on a couple of doors, like on my backstage area, because they kind of have that industrial look to them. Yeah. Those, and then there was, uh, I think the Australia pack has another light that's kind of similar that yeah. um, looks, looks good like that, so. Uh, man, the this again looks right out of the uh, out of the concept art. Um, the one problem that I did have with this is like this dude right here is stuck. Like he can't get into. Yeah. They can swim around. So I wish. And you and I talked about this, but I wish Frontier. So like, um, I'm actually gonna go, gonna pop out of uh, PPU here, and we'll go over. 
I wish when you were in Tedged Cam, it didn't like drop you off in the spot you activated. <laughs> yeah, right where you were. Okay, so um, Frontier, if any of you are watching, so we can take a look here at, at this. So that is for the baby. The baby can traverse the rocks. Why can the adults not traverse the rocks? Nonsense. Please um, fix it. <laughs> yeah. So that would save a world of headache because if if I'm not able to do that, I'm going to have to raise the terrain up in very specific areas so that they can actually make their way into the water. Um, again, I don't know why they can and they can't. Um, like, I guess it's because like the babies are smaller and thus more agile, but it's just inconvenient. Yeah. Let's give I mean, them all the same. The aquatic rocks too. So the other thing that's weird to me, if you if you click on these, uh, so there's some temple. Let me find the rock. Here we go. Um, so these are even attached to the habitat and they can't use them. Yeah. Um, and then there's some pieces. Let me find, find one here. There's some of the faux rock work. I can find one. That's temple piece. So <laughs> that's temple. That's, there on, you go. that's on the habitat as well. Um, I'm trying to think of an example where. So some of these, they say that they're not connected to a habitat. Um, so these ones all are. Mm. Yeah, select habitat, select habitat. Yeah, so I don't know what you did to make these be a part of the habitat. Maybe just because they're inside of them, but there's like in the. Um, Oh, I know what I'll do in the uh, oops. In the tropical discovery, I have areas with faux rock where it says that it's not connected to any habitat. So I have no idea how to do that um, or what what you do to make that happen. But even if there was an option to click that on the habitat or something where it would make it more traversable for the animals, I don't know how they designed it, but um, that's something that needs to be fixed for sure. I had I had no idea that mechanic even existed, so maybe that's why. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, either way, it looks amazing. Again, I'll throw up the uh, concept art because this looks much much closer to kind of the design they were going for. I love the addition of this little platform here too, on the interior, so that you know you might get one that sunbathes up here and you get a little bit better view. Um, in the in the master plan, you can tell that the, in this building, this platform is probably supposed to be a little bit below water like this one is. Um, but it was a nightmare even being able to get this to work. So, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so you got it. That's an example where you kind of have to make a trade off between the game and what you're trying to actually do in reality. Yeah. So one thing people might notice um, comparing this to the original version is that I took out all of the snow. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So all of the snow and like all of the snow rocks just because, well, A, the um, master plan didn't have it. And B, I just think it's kind of a weird design choice just to have these like flex or like these sections, which just have this intense white and this otherwise really sort of um, earth tones, natural scenery. And I feel like it would be pretty difficult for a zoo to maintain this um, in like a sort of spring summer time. Yeah, and they were just all it was just all like faux. It was supposed to be like the faux yeah. snow and like like that glacier uh, glacier run exhibit has a huge fake glacier with fake snow and stuff on it. Yeah. Um, in addition to some other things, so I was just pulling inspiration from other habitats. Like honestly, I don't. Like I was even wary about putting trees in the habitat with the polar bears. Like I, most of what I saw didn't have any large trees in it or shrubbery in it really. So um, I just was completely sh shooting blind, honestly. <laughs> yeah, so um, polar bears can um, have a pretty like weird amount of foliage in their enclosures despite their habitats. Um, just because they won't usually um, destroy stuff like that, like a um, either a more temperate bear or a herbivore might. And mm, if you look up like the polar, if you look up like polar bear exhibit, they do get pretty grassy. And also, I think also in the master plan, there were like trees inside the boundaries. Yeah, that's one thing that is, you know, I, again, my lack of knowledge when it comes to like habitats and zoos and stuff was like, I know in the master plan they had specifically, you can see this sort of. Um, tree hedge that they have at the back of the habitat in the master plan um similar to what's in the savannah but you know i didn't know like how 
you know, do zoos, or is that sort of a middle ground where zoos are like, yeah, we need that. And even though there wouldn't necessarily be these types of trees in their actual habitat, you know, is that a line we walk? I, you know, those are the kinds yeah. of things that I just didn't really know um, when designing it. So it's good to know. Like, I prefer this aesthetic much better, honestly. Yeah. Um, I think it fits the like overall the big, theme of the yeah. area. Like the big tree hedge definitely in the background definitely helps make things feel more like intimate. And, yep. um claustrophobic but it, it, it's immersive yeah for sure um awesome well this looks so good um i think i think well it's hard for me to pick which one i like the best but in terms of like the most dramatic change i think this is for me um yeah. it looks so good huge huge upgrade cool. Um, right, so yeah let's final. uh we'll go ahead and do the aerial view of this area and then i'll get back oh, into yeah. the peep view um so yeah, this shot in particular right here, I'm going to put up uh, a Google Earth image and it is like insane how accurate this is to the actual Predator Ridge. <laughs> this is definitely one of my favorite views of the stuff I did just because how close I managed to get it. Yeah, I mean, even the the terrain painting you did where you've got their, you know, the, the areas that they walk the most and yeah. a little bit of mud buildup. I mean, it's just so fantastic. One thing I really wanted to um, kind of change about the original versions was that they just felt kind of like flat and 2D. Yep. And you can augment that sort of thing. If you have grass down, put like um, ground cover where that grass is. And I promise you it will look so much more like full and realistic. Yeah. So what are your go to's for um, for, you know, this kind of type of ground cover? So. As you can see, it's mostly the crowberry, but then I also throw some brambles and some Brazil nut saplings in there just to make it look a little more wild. Yeah, and then the, then you painted with the long grass. Yeah, that's yeah. like the final touch. Nice. Yeah, that looks so fantastic. Just overgrown, like it looks like an it looks like an exhibit that has been in place for you know two decades, which it has. Yeah. So, um, just so good. You can already see. All right. Yeah. So immediately fences are way better <laughs> i can <Yeah>. tell <laughs> um i made i made it just a pretty simple like custom wooden railing but i think it definitely is an improvement over the steel like mesh that we had before oh man looks so cool with the city in the background and it's city like, definitely helps yeah like, the thing. yep oh, yeah totally i mean it's like you're those are the things where it breaks your immersion and you're like yep i'm in a zoo um, yeah. Man, this looks so good. So this is probably the habitat I had to change the least of because, okay. like, obviously it's a massive hoof stockyard full of grazing animals. So they're already going to do a ton of damage to the plant life that was there. But um, I still like, like, especially like in the sort of edges and corners, you have a lot of this ground cover that I used in the other exhibits just because they haven't really gotten there yet. And would they, you know, they probably wouldn't get super close to like the people either, right? So exactly. you, these plants would have more of an opportunity to grow and yeah. kind of establish. Mm -hmm. oh, that's so good. Um, all right, One I'm going to go thing, around this way. All right. One thing I really like doing with these um, much more barren exhibits is just to surround them to the brim with foliage because then it like kind of really like um, accentuates them among the other exhibits in the zoo. Yeah, I think um, you'll we'll pop again out into the aerial view, and you'll get a really good uh, view of that. Oh man, that looks so cool! Yeah, the giraffes really make it. Oh, that is incredible! They're just like pop popping out above the tree there. That's so yeah. awesome. So I've been fortunate enough to actually go on uh, and not really a safari. I went to a national park in South Africa. And um, mm -hmm. so I've seen like giraffes in the wild. And I kid you not, this just like gave me deja vu. I swear <laughs> there was a moment where we like rounded this bend, bend and there was just like giraffes grazing on trees, like kind of hidden behind bushes and stuff like this. Like that's so, so well cool. done. Um, I so yeah, want to years ago. Might have been the same one. Who knows? Oh, uh, did you go to? It's, I think it was like Palansburg. Yep, uh, that's the one I did. Yeah, so cool. <laughs> um, did and, you get to see any lions? Um, yeah, we saw a couple oh, of lions. Nice. There was a whole herd of elephants that walked across the road one morning. Yeah, we saw. We had we had elephants. We saw everything 
but a cheetah. Uh, no cheetahs, mm-hmm. which I've heard are really, really hard to find or see. So we spotted a leopard one morning. That oh, was that's amazing. awesome. Yeah, we didn't see yeah. that. Um, and the lions we saw, they were like pretty far away, unfortunately. But it's still cool to see like lions in the wild. Oh yeah. Nice. This looks so good. Um, oh, so this is a, an improvement as well. Uh, to yeah, the bridge so here. I replaced the yeah I replaced the mesh with a kind of stronger like girders and beams for the railing, which I actually based on the Toyota Elephant Passage, which oh, is okay. on the other side yeah. of the zoo. Real life. Yeah, I'm so probably gonna good, like, mimic yeah. this on the other side too. I like that. Um, I thought it was a good difference for just a bridge for these massive mammals. Yeah, that's a, this is a perfect example of where you have to break, kind of break from the the source material because the master plan yeah. concept art, this looks like a supernatural bridge and, you know, they don't really have any protective barriers or anything in the concept art. And so this to yeah. me is like one of those things that feels... Um, feels like the exception where you know yeah you get the designer who comes up with the master plan and then you get the you know the zoologists who are like yeah you can't do that <laughs> you gotta you gotta put some steel up there or something so yeah um yeah and then i love these little islands here that you've created i know uh, in the concept art it was like a kind of just dirt path and they had these like little islands of rock and foliage and yeah that looks like really cool like looks really good Oh, oh my gosh i didn't even i haven't looked under here yet oh these look so much better so yeah um originally it was kind of just like a dirt rock ceiling but um it was actually a pretty easy fix i just moved the um plaster all the way down so it was a cleaner roof and then i uh, okay. um then i augmented the um terrariums with some extra rock work with these really neat little windows we got from the faux rock set yeah those look so cool Man, that's a huge upgrade over what was there before. It looks like legit um, habitats that they would put under here. That looks so yeah. cool. I love how I, organic you made. You kind of made the openings as well. They're not just complete yeah. boxes. Yeah. And then I stole your um, signs from Tropical Discovery. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, my if little thought, fake uh, info signs. <laughs> yeah, I thought they were like a really neat, simple design. So I just sort of transferred them over for the sake of consistency. Yeah, that's what I like about them, especially for, you know, they don't work well if you're in a habitat, like a large habitat where it's like one or two species, because then you yeah. need to have a huge board, you know. But for ones where theoretically you might have three different species in here and this is a whole blurb on one of them, I mean, I think yeah. they, they fit the bill there or foot the bill um awesome any changes to uh oh yeah let's go up here and look because i'm sure we'll this is actually a good way to get an aerial view i obviously didn't change anything about the fatal bad experience area itself but um definitely what's around it oh man again i think uh built up the terrain a little bit better here mm. So what's what is making the giraffes kind of hang out over here? Um, I have no idea because That's... I put them there when I sent you the file, but they obviously moved. But yeah, then they just moved back. So it's very generous of them. And yeah, interesting. It's um, uh, it's cool though because one of the issues that I think there is in the game is that like in a habitat like this with multiple species, you don't really see them congregating together okay. like this. That they... Yeah, that bothers me too. Yeah, they're always spread out, but. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, so here's what you're talking about, right? Like the the interiors of these habitats, like they're gonna yeah. just decimate any ground cover, right? Exactly. Yeah. And then like along along the river, it's a little more like hydrated, and so the animals obviously aren't really grazing along that. But again, especially in like the like perfect center of these, it's just completely barren. Nice. That's cool. All right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna keep going up here. Oh, nice. Then, like, even, this looks better, even. Like, this is oh, kind yeah. of stuff that, like, I, I think I had this probably too close, I'm guessing. Um, I don't remember changing anything about, like, the like width, but I gotcha. did put concrete at the bottom just so... And drainage. I think I put drain, drain, drainage in most of them just so if it ever, like, rained or flooded, it wouldn't just fill up. Yeah, you'll notice even in the areas where I do have, like, a good amount of foliage, there's still, like, the trails that, that like, where the animals are still, like, carving through. 
Man, it looks so good. Alright, I'm gonna go up to the top here. Yeah, okay, so yeah, you've got like walking trails yeah. down to this feeder here and Exactly. Oh, dude, the, see, I haven't looked at this area yet either. Like, this was completely, I didn't really touch this at all. I'm going to i am gonna go down here because I feel like you, it looks like you did a lot of work here. Um, yeah, a little bit. So good. Okay, I'm going to go down there. I want to see. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. That's one of the, the like, risks yeah. of using this camera. <laughs> yeah, in, like, tended camp for these, like, really piece-heavy builds, you just, like, sudden, you're just, like, suddenly on top of it. It's like, oh. <laughs> Okay. Oh, that looks so cool. We looks got our so much train. better. Yeah. yeah oh, and yeah, this wall here. Mm -hmm. Is that, uh, what did you use for this? Is that like just the plaster piece so, or? No, that's the concrete fence. But oh. then I put, I put supports from the wooden fence in between instead of the original ones. Oh, and so you don't get that it. big bulky uh, exactly. cement thing. Oh, that looks so yeah. good. That's so much cleaner. Mm hmm. I learned that technique from Rudy. Okay. Yeah. Man, that's really good. I love this. This looks so good now. Adding the tree in there and this little rock outcropping with still some enrichment. I like yeah. that. Even this looks I, better now too. <laughs> I put, um, I noticed like it was a little bit on the short side, so I just threw some lock. Lo lo ugh, logs in front just to okay. discourage the animals from coming too close. Yeah. That's awesome. And we'll go to the watering hole. Oh, wow. Yeah, that looks really good. I love how um, this is one thing I did notice that stood out to me is I love how far you shrunk this tree into the ground. Mm -hmm. um, one thing, when I use this tree, I've tended to make it a lot taller, but I love the look of this. Yeah, so Brazil nuts are easily one of my like top three favorite trees in the game, just because if you shrink them down, they look like a sort of gnarly live oak, and you yeah. can use them in pretty much any biome. Yep. Yeah, that's a really, really cool use of it there. Because that's always my default, like with those, and the Kapok tree too, like my yeah. default is usually like, oh, I'm just gonna, like, I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna, you know, shrink them down a little bit because their trunks are enormous. Um, yeah, but, like a hundred feet tall. Right, yeah, but I've never <laughs> done it like to that extent and I love how that looks. It's really nice. Yeah. It just looks like a really gnarly oak tree yeah. or poplar or something like that. Man, this is so good. I could not be happier with how this turned out. This is such an upgrade over the little dinky retaining wall I had there. <laughs> mm. Yeah, um, uh, it was really neat um, when the master plan like um, showed like the different like shifts in terrain. It was mm -hmm. super helpful, super helpful for me. Yeah, there's that cross view uh, page that, and I'll I'll toss that up. But it basically shows like the restaurant, the watering hole, and then. Like, like you said here, and it's a pretty, in the concept art, it's like a pretty extreme elevation change um, mm. from the watering hole up to here. And it's something that I, I didn't really, like that's again me, where I, my lack of knowledge prevented me from doing it because I was like, well, are they really gonna, you know, like how, what kind of hills can these animals handle? Um, yeah. You know, and so I think my default with without the same knowledge base is like, okay, well, these things need to be a little flatter. Um, just for the animal's sake, but um, yeah, I like. I think you found a good in between there because that's definitely not the extreme in the concept art, but it definitely is more elevated than what was there before. Yeah. I think so. that's what's so fun about this community is that we all have such different strengths. Yeah, I agree. It, you know, there's. Yeah. Um, that's one of the reasons why, you know, I, I wanted you to come on is I know this is a weakness of mine. Like, I just don't have the knowledge and, and you know, the design understanding to do this kind of thing. And it's yeah. so much better now. <laughs> and then I definitely don't have the knowledge or understanding to do what you do with stuff like architecture and backstage. That Those details always just kick my ass. Yeah, and I think this is a... Um, I'm not sure if you followed uh, No Name Landia with Planet Coaster, but you know, anytime you get collaboration like this, and I would put this in that same category, is it, the end result is better. Um, you know, it's yeah. it's kind of thing where 
um people give mike a lot of crap because he comes in and like deletes stuff you know and yeah. it's kind of a running joke but at the end of the yeah. day if the product the end end product is better i mean that's that's why and it just happens that he's you know he has a really good sense for design um so he does it a lot but when you anytime you do a collaboration or invite someone in um you have to be willing to to let them sort of make their mark on whatever you're doing um which which that's one thing i appreciated like i know there was a few things i was like well reel it in a little bit but yeah. for the most part i mean i would say you were not afraid to leave your mark and kind of you know take some things away and change some things and it's better for it it was yeah it's never ever ever ill-intentioned when right. people revise stuff yeah and so like i said see... You see the potential and you like you build on it yep literally, literally. <laughs> right <laughs> yeah it looks so much better i love even just how soft this is as you're kind of walking into this exhibit compared to what was there before i think is fantastic i love this area here how these guys are hanging out there um yeah man it looks so good and then this too i like it seems so silly to like geek out about this so much but it looks so good just the even the uh plant build up around the tracks and yeah it just looks fantastic anyway yeah we'll we'll uh, end it where we started thank you so much for all of your hard work um it, again everything looks so much better now um and I, I probably will ask for your help more and more you're gonna you're gonna regret doing this because now i'm gonna bug you about <laughs> habitats all the time <laughs> honestly i look forward to it because it was just such i've admired your work from a distance for so long and it's it was an absolute honor to work on this so thank you dude awesome sweet well yeah everyone go check out his channel subscribe uh check out his videos um and uh yeah thank you all so much for watching we'll see you in the next episode bye